I'm here today with Cece Muldoon. She has a classic car collection that will make you go weak at the knees. And as you can see, I'm also joined by my 19 month old twins. They're here today as well. And Cece is so easy going. She's letting them <laughs> play and sit in her Ferrari Dino, which is absolutely beautiful inside and out. I did put their shoes in the washing machine, <laughs> so they don't have mud on them. It's all fine. It's meant to be used. There's no, no issues. No issues whatsoever. How easy going. Thank you so much for giving us your Absolutely. time. Brilliant. Yeah, great to see you today. So tell me, first of all, what cars have you got in your collection? So I have got clearly this, which yes. is a 1974 246 DTS Dino. I've got a 1934 MGPA, so a little pre-war MG in red and black. Uh, and I have got a 1955 Triumph TR3 in British Racing Green, so the very early one with the small mouth. Um, so those are my three classic cars that are my own. Um, and then I help curate my family's car collection as well. So, but those cars are in, in the US and in Mexico. So, but those are my three cars. How exciting. And they all get to be on show, don't they? Yes, they do. So, I mean, they, they're, I use them for different things. So um, my Triumph TR3, uh, they all have names, by the way. So, so what's uh, this one called? So this is called Viola. And the reason she's called Viola is because um, her color is um, Viola Metallizzato. So this is the official um, name that Ferrari gave to this color. They made 31. Um, and this is the original color of the car. And out so. of the 31, how many are still in existence? Oh, I don't know if they all are, but pretty much they would have all, they probably all are still yeah. around. Whether yeah. they're the same color or not is a different story. People tend to repaint Dinos and Ferraris in general and I think there was a time period where they all got painted red, um, <laughs> which is very, yeah, which is a common thing to paint the Ferraris red. Um, and only recently has there been a trend towards going back to original colors and they'll find the, the colors underneath, you know, the repainted red. Um, so yeah, there's Viola and then um, Hector the pre-war MG. So his name is Hector. He's the only male in the collection. Um, and then uh, my Triumph is called Froglet because Froglet. she's green. Oh, yes. Brilliant. So I use, I use Froglet for sort of more active things. Like, um, so I did a hill climb yesterday and Froglet was the right car to take up there. Um, I use Viola to go on tours and car rallies. Um, and uh, Hector, it's, who's the newest acquisition, just goes to everything as well. Amazing. And have you always named your cars? Uh, no, I haven't. It started with Froglet, actually. Froglet was the first one. Um, and yeah, since then, I've started naming them. I've named my parents' cars as well. And to my father's chagrin, he's got um, Princess and Cupcake in there. <laughs> princess <laughs> and Cupcake? Yes, he's got Cupcake and Princess, which I'm not sure he's too big a fan of, but yeah. So, <laughs> hello Francesca. And what cars are Princess and Cupcake? Um, so Princess is a 250 GT Europa, um, bodied by Vignale, which was actually, it's named Princess because uh, it was commissioned by Princess Liliane de Retti, who was the wife of King Leopold of Belgium. Amazing. So they commissioned five one-off Ferraris um, at the time. Uh, he was his, uh, so she was his second wife, excuse me. Um, and she commissioned this car and oversaw everything for the build. So it's a very unique, weird and wonderful. And it was the last car that Vignale ever bodied for Ferrari. So it's quite a special car and she's a princess. Um, so we've now got Alexander here because uh, he beat the horn and it frightened him a little bit. He wasn't quite <laughs> expecting it to be so loud, was he? No. See, see. <laughs> Please carry on. <laughs> uh, so, yes, and then um, you asked Cupcake. Cupcake is a uh, 375 America, so uh, same year, 1954. Um, so it's the, it was the Paris show car at the time, and it's got a, uh, it's a Grand Prix engine in it. So it's, it's actually quite a special car, but it's called Cupcake because um, as all, as I was saying previously, it was painted red, as many Ferraris were. Um, and when we dug deeper, we found out the original paint color is baby blue and cream. So, oh, wow. so it's a baby blue car with a cream top. And actually, it sounds a bit like, why would you want a Ferrari in that color? And when you see it in person, it's it just, just works. beautiful. Mm. Yeah, it's a beautiful car. Mm. So yes, but it does look like a cupcake. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to put the twins back into your gorgeous Dino. Oh, of course. And we would love to hear more about your Dinos. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, so I've had the car for um, nearly three years. Um, it has had, it basically had one owner in the US. Uh, most of its life it's spent in California um, and I purchased it in Texas. And it's a, it's a very special car. So this was, um, the Dino itself is um, Ferrari's first foray into, um, you know, rear engine sports. So old man Enzo used to say that um, the cart should never pull the horse. 
so the horse should pull the cart and you yeah. shouldn't have yeah. um, so he was he was very reticent to go in the direction that everyone else was going in yeah. um, and uh, the engine in this is actually very special because it was um, the brainchild of, of his son Alfredino yeah. um, so his, his son tragically died of muscular dystrophy when he was 24 but before he did um, he'd been the one that sort of envisaged uh, the development of it. Of course, actually, the, the development of it, the technical part, was done by Vittorio Iano, who at that point had moved to Ferrari, and it was him that conceived of this 65-degree V6 um, and sort of developed it. The engine was used in Formula One um, starting in 1956, sorry, for Formula Two first in 1956, and then eventually Formula One, um, and those cars were driven by, you know, the greatest of the greats, so the Mike yeah. Hawthorns and Peter Collins and Luigi Musso's and Olivier Jean de Bian, all these people. So uh, it's a really, for me, it's a really special thing because it ended up in the road car eventually. Yeah. Um, and when I drive this, I, I know I always think of, of the history of the engine. And what's yeah. the size of the engine? So this is a 2.4 liter. So the 246 means 2.4 yeah. six cylinder. So yeah. the naming conventions for Ferraris went um, for a long time. It was the engine displacement divided by 12, so per cylinder. So if you had a 250, it was a three liter. Um, and then at some point they started sort of mixing it up and having different um, naming conventions. And this was one of them where they just had the engine displacement and then the number of cylinders afterwards. So, so yeah. And is this your first Ferrari or have you had a few already? No, this is my, this is my, well, I mean, technically it's not meant to be a Ferrari. So, you know, all the purists would say this is actually a Dino. It's not a Ferrari because it never, so at the time, because, um, and they didn't want to have a you know mid rear engine sports car. Yeah. Um, it was actually just a Dino. Yeah. And hence you see like there's Dino on, on the yes. steering wheel. Yeah. Um, but actually, it's yeah, it, it has become you know, appreciated as a Ferrari. It is, it is a Ferrari, yeah. you know, Ferrari engine. So yes, and it is my first one. Yes, and and the very first time I drove it, I. Um, it's a very different feeling. So I've driven other people's Ferraris. I've driven um, my dad's Ferraris, but driving my own, um, I did for a moment come out and think. God, I'm, I'm driving a house, you know, I'm just sort of like, <laughs> oh, and you're so precious about the whole thing. Um, and at some point you just realize, you know, you are, you're going to ding it at some point. You've got to use them, um, you know, cars are meant to be driven. Um, yeah, that's it. So, so this is a question actually. Um, so I asked my followers, and thank you very much followers for asking some questions. And ultimately this is going to be what the VIP members do. They will be asking questions and then I will be asking my interviewee a question on their behalf. So okay. this is one of the questions. When you go out, I mean, it is such an expensive car and it is so gorgeous. And so, I mean, the condition of it as well. How do you feel when you're going out with it? Do you think, <laughs> Oh, where do I park it? To be honest, yes, to, to a little bit. The where do I park it bit is difficult because, uh, I mean, we live in a very safe place. If I were um, where I'm from, Mexico, if I, if I took this out in Guadalajara, I wouldn't leave it anywhere. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I consider where I live Woodstock to be pretty safe. Um, but, of course, I do worry. Um, that said, it's still, you know, you have to take that risk owning a car like this you you absolutely have to use them because there's no point in this sitting in a showroom that's not what they were built for and it's you know not where you're going to get your joy so so i think i've come to terms with that and yeah and sort of accepted that criminal for it to not be used and actually i'll tell you a little story so i've taken this car on um tons of rallies i've done you know i just the last one I did, I did in Puglia with my mother as a navigator. Uh, and we were out for, you know, five days and driving everywhere. And she gets driven, as I say, absolutely everywhere. Uh, never had anything, not even a scratch on the car. She's been absolutely fine. And then um, a couple months ago, in, well, in summer, so after when lockdown lifted, I went to barbecue to a friend's house. Um, and at some point I had to move. It was parked and we were having this barbecue. And then I had to move the car so somebody could get out. And I just, I just didn't see a wall behind me. And I went, yeah, sure, clunk. And I just backed up into a wall. Um, so, you know, and I, and, I, and I joked thereafter, you know, so here I have taken the car all over France, Spain, Italy, and then I back up in a wall in Great Missenden. So, you know, I mean, it, it's, it happens, you know.